I was good gang today we are taking the hip hop unk test now if you don't know what the unk test is it's simple the unk test is a test used to determine if your old arse needs to get on out of here if you're an unk you need to stop giving opinions you need to stop being young and fly if you have any sort of streetwear or anything like that you need to throw it away you are too old to have rappers and whatnot and dragon ball z on your wall behind you if you are unk you can't be going to the club no more it's time for you to you know start hitting the cigar lounges or whatnot right if you are unk there is no more casual dating it is time for you to settle down with a family that's the unk test and today we're taking the hip-hop addiction hip-hop version of the unk test all right salute me or shoot me we're getting into this unk test reaction let's do it let's do it let's do it let's do it i saw one of my mutuals nizzy make this type of video so i'm gonna make my own version except for rap strictly and this is basically if you remember these things you're officially unk now if you remember the original Drake's the type of guy memes, and I don't mean the ones that just came back a couple years ago, I mean like the originals from back in the day that had a little bit of different wording, you're officially unk. I guess I'm unk off of that because to be honest, I do, I do remember, I do remember those. I remember they were on like old Instagram and whatnot, and I remember, yeah, they were on like old Instagram because I remember a couple years prior they used to have those kind of edgy Lil Wayne sucks memes and I feel like those got replaced with the Drake type of guy memes. If you can wrap this song. Drank in my cup, Kirk Bangs 20, oh, it was 2011? I always thought it was 2013 for some reason. Kirk Bangs was a one hit wonder. I don't, I haven't even heard what he had to say yet. But boy, do I remember Kirk Bangs song almost word for word and remember it when it first like came out or around that time okay i do remember when it came out but i don't remember word for word so i guess i'm not unk on that one you're officially unk if you have any recollection of who this man is like if you know who this is and you remember him you're officially unk hey sword ride around with that rocket people want to take my flow though thank you for the promo we the best to be that loco okay all right, the, the fact that I immediately saw that man and started rapping his bars, I think proves that I know who that is. Funny enough, Ace Hood, it's funny that Ace Hood gets brought up here. Ace Hood is one of my favorite rappers of all time. Like, I love Ace Hood. I was big on the original We The Best, Cash Money. Uh, that was that like 2000, I mean, not Cash Money, more like a Young Money, We The Best, 2009-13 era. A lot of people know that man for Bugatti. I know him for not only Bugatti, but Hustle Hard, um, We Out Ya, uh, you know, Body Bag, Starvation, all of those tapes. And it's funny enough that I, I'm not gonna lie, Ace Hood is a good unk test, if I'm gonna be honest. Because I will talk to people my age about Ace Hood, right? And I'll mention them. A lot of people have just absolutely no clue who he is. And there's like a fraction of people that I could like mention like, oh no, he's, you don't know, remember that song, New Bugatti? I woke up in a new Bugatti. And then people will be like, oh yeah, 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 I remember that, right? But the sad reality is the part of that song that they remember is Future's Hook. They don't remember Ace Hood's verse on that. But that's my little Ace Hood rant. Everyone knows about Rich Homie Kwan and Young Thug, but if you were around when Rich Homie Kwan was widely considered the better of the two and the bigger star of the two, you're officially unk. I do remember that. I do remember that. I remember Charlemagne got like crucified a little bit back in the day for saying that Rich Homie Kwan was the more talented of the two. And honestly, yeah, Rich Homie Kwan was the more talented of the two. I think, if I can remember, I think Rich Homie, uh... I was gonna say Rich Homie Kwan might have had the lead in the beginning over Young Thug, but I don't necessarily know if that's the case, man. Like, uh, I don't, uh, I don't really remember who had more hits first because I remember Thug had like Stoner, Hookah, he had Digits. Uh, actually, you know what? No, Rich Homie Kwan did have more hits between like 
my hit a uh, um what man 30 better da, da, da. i don't remember the name of that song but no rich homie kwan did have more hits now nah, it's crazy rich homie kwan was the better of the two but out of nowhere rich homie kwan well i think it was like i think it was uh he had he had some issues with tig I think it's a game which was the label but rich homie kwan's career was just going up and then it just flatlined out of nowhere a couple years ago people were everyone was saying he was gonna have a comeback but it never happened if you remember when Nikki and Safari were dating and just the way this man was consistently just clowned and embarrassed, you're officially Unk or Auntie in this case. If you I do remember the Nikki and Safari. Um, that was like obviously before Meek Mill. And if I'm not mistaken, wasn't the story that like Safari was lit first? I mean lit and then Nikki was like rapping, but then Nikki obviously far surpassed him like 90 to 150 times over. I mean, Safari never even had a lukewarm song. And my only recollection of Safari is him getting clowned on The Breakfast Club. Remember when Soldier Boy was beefing with Amigo, specifically Quavo, and dropped a diss song on him? Quavo said he wants to beef with me. You're officially up. I'm not gonna lie, this was the most disappointing era of Soldier Boy because I do remember that. That was back when he was, st I think Rich the Kid and Famous Dex were still kind of messing with him and they were trying to, he was trying to usher those two in. And that was when Soldier Boy was just beefing with everybody for clout. Migos, yeah, he had that beef song that he just mentioned. Uh, the, it was Migos, Chris Brown, Lil Yachty, and he had some issues with some of those Chicago guys. I want to say it was like Rico Reckless, I think. And I remember during that time, every single day, I would come home from school at three o'clock and like by five, six o'clock, academics would have a Soldier Boy video or two about what craziness Soldier Boy did that day. You know what I mean? But every single day I could look forward to what BS Soldier Boy <laughs> what BS Soldier Boy was on when I got home from school. I do remember that man. But Soldier Boy, I don't know if that man was on drugs. I don't know what the story was, but that was a crazy era of Soldier Boy. And if you remember when Stay Scheming came out and you know who Drake was dissing in this verse specifically. Common. You're officially unk. He was dissing, yeah, he was dissing Common. Uh, long story short, if you don't remember, I don't remember how that beef started. I think that beef started over a girl. And if I could remember correctly, Drake dissed Common on Stay Scheming. And then Common did a response, but the response was on the Stay Scheming beat. And you have to understand that when you release your own original song, which is what Stay Scheme it was, that song is going to play on the radio. It's going to get hella clout. Everybody's going to hear that, right? The common Stay Scheme and remix where he disses Drake, the only place you're going to find that is on Dat Piff and live mixtapes and those niche websites. You know, the public isn't going to know about those. So just that alone made Drake dominate him in that beef. And not to mention, not only was Stay Scheme in the commercial song, it was a mega hit, mega, mega hit. You know, French Montana redeemed himself with that one. Like as much as people want to, you know, poop on French Montana. And if this song was your introduction to YG and you remember hearing this song on the radio and stuff when it first came out. Toot it and boot it. Um, yeah, man, I did. I am so unk because every topic he brings up, I feel like I could talk about forever. But yes, Toot It and Boot It. That was like YG's like 2010, 11 hit. And then he did Toot It and Boot It. And then his career immediately went downward. And it wasn't until like 2014 that, you know, he got with Jeezy and like Jeezy gave him a comeback because they did uh, My Hitta, the song with Rich Homie Kwan that I mentioned earlier. Um, what other songs did, I think that was what put YG on the map again. And then like, why you always hating and who do you love and whatnot? Those songs started coming a little later. You're like two years from the grave. Okay, so that's the first unk test. Let's hop into the second one. All right, we got another hip hop unk test. If you remember at least three of these things, you are officially unk. I'm making this video just because like it's funny to make people feel old, even though obviously I remember all these things. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to make the video. 
First, we got the chicken noodle soup song and dance, okay? Chicken noodle soup with a Coke on the side. I do remember that song very briefly um, from like the mid 2000s. But, you know, what caught me off guard was who drinks a Coke with soup? That was the only thing that like never made a lot of sense to me. But if you remember this, you're official. It, it was a dance. It was a dance song. Oh, oh. But especially if you still remember how to do the dance, you're officially young. If you remember the read a book song, I think it was on BET. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure it was though. If you remember the R E A D A B O, you are unk. I have no clue what that is. So luckily, at least for today, I'm not unk. If you remember listening to Dave Loaf's music like right as soon as she blew up, before anybody had really seen pictures of her, and you assumed that she was a 14 year old light skinned boy, you're officially. I never assumed that, but I do remember when Dave. Dave's loaf blow blew up. I remember, if I'm not mistaken, didn't she? If didn't she have like a song with Dirk back in the day that was like pretty lit? Honestly, my the only time I ever listen to her nowadays is that she's got like some songs with Rick Ross that I bump from time to time. But yeah, forgot about Dave's loaf. To be honest, that was, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Young. If you remember Lil Wayne's green and yellow remix to the song Black and Yellow, which came out right before the Packers played the Steelers in the Super Bowl, you're officially young. I'm not gonna lie, Wayne has like a thousand, thousands of tracks. I was never too big on the green and yellow. Yeah, that was, you know, everybody always talked about like, oh, Wayne, like, uh, obviously, as you know, Wayne is actually a huge Packers fan. That's why, you know, that was done. But everybody always talks about how, you know, Artist puts out a track, Wayne remixes it, everybody listens to Wayne's track, nobody listens to that artist track. Obviously, that happened all the time. Prime example of that, if you're bored, look up Rollin' by Waka Flock of Flame. Um, that's a song that Waka did whatever BS on that, and Wayne took that song and made that song his own classic, and everybody only knows Wayne's version. But Green and Yellow is definitely... You know, the type of song where I liked Wiz Khalifa's better. This is going to sound ridiculous to people who weren't really like there. But like, if you remember when Amber Rose and Kim Kardashian were on like similar levels of like status, you're officially young. I do remember that. That was like the Wiz Khalifa era, I think. I don't know if she was Kim K status, but I never really paid attention to those like celebrity women like that, to be honest. If you remember when the BET Awards were actually good, like all the A-list stars used to show up, like Beyonce, Jay-Z, and all them. And to us, like the BET Awards were bigger than the Grammys. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't care nothing about the Grammys growing up. Just when was the BET Awards? Everyone would gather on the TV, watch the BET Awards. And more specifically, if you ever DVR recorded the BET Awards. Yo, I'm gonna be real. In terms of the BET Awards, um, I never really paid attention to any of those award shows. There was just too many of them. Um, Grammys felt out of a touch. BET. Then there, it was like the Grammys I didn't watch because I felt like it was out of touch, but it was like the biggest show by viewership. And then it was just like BET, the VH1. The only one that I think I might have somewhat cared about was maybe the MTV VMAs, you know, maybe the Nick Choice Awards. I would have shown some love to the Nick Choice Awards, but now those award shows, man, there was just too many of them and they were too numerous. And not to mention, like, I'm a numbers guy. Like, I don't care about these, like, uh, uh, subjective awards. Like, I want to see your first week sales. I want to see how many number ones you got. I don't care about these award shows that are just determined by people that just know nothing about rap music. You know what I mean? Regardless, though, that is the hip hop unk test. As you can tell, I am definitely unk because I was basically able to answer every single question that man threw out. So... I guess it's time that I retire from YouTube, even though I just started. But if you made it this far, just like and comment. Show your boy some love. I'm out. Peace.